On June 7th, voters will elect a new government. I don't know who voters will choose. That is up to them. But I'm pretty sure that it won't be me. After Thursday, I will no longer be Ontario's Premier. And I am okay with that. With less than a week to go before Election Day, Ontario Liberal leader Kathleen Wynne has waved the white flag. On Saturday, she conceded defeat to either the PCs or the NDP. But she's still asking her supporters to vote Liberal to stop those parties from getting a majority. It was a surprise move, but not unheard of. Back in 2001, BC's NDP Premier Ujjal Dessange also conceded before the election. I know I'm going into the opposition. I want to have a contingent of New Democrats to hold Mr. Campbell's feet to the fire. Vancouver. You are Facing a 50 percentage point deficit in the polls, Dessange admitted he was going to lose to the Liberals and Gordon Campbell. The voters elected just two NDP MLAs to the legislature, and that didn't include Dessange. So, did that admission of defeat backfire, or would he do it all over again? Former BC Premier Ujjal Dessange joins me now from Vancouver. Hi there, Mr. Dessange. Great to see you again. Hi. Okay, so taking us back to your own decision to concede defeat in 2001, a week before you, um, you, you led the BC NDP to its worst ever election result. What do you, what do you remember from back then? Well, I remember that uh, when I took over as Premier uh, about just over a year before the election, uh, we were at 11% in the polls. Um, and then in the campaign, we weren't doing too well. Um, we had the debate. There was only one debate, and uh, we were beginning to pick up. And then a minor scandal erupted um, of a letter that had been written unauthorized by a cabinet minister uh, promising millions of dollars of money to a lumber company. Uh, and our numbers, uh, which were beginning to go up a little bit, uh, just tanked. And um, our internal polling a week uh, before the election was saying that we were going to get zero seats. And, um, and our situation was slightly different in BC. There were only two political parties that had MLAs in the legislature and had any prospect of electing MLAs. Therefore, um, I wanted to make sure there at least somebody, one, two, three, six, seven MLAs, uh, to, uh, to keep uh, the um, government's feet to the fire. And um, of course, we elected two, and uh, I wasn't one of them. I was happy with that. I was okay with that. I, uh, but, uh, but at least we had to, uh, where was, we were actually going forward, uh, looking at zero about a week before the election. I imagine uh, conceding defeat before the election was as novel then as it is now. How difficult a decision was it to make? It was a very difficult decision. Of course, I mean, people would say all kinds of things, you know, how can you give up? How can you be a defeatist? Uh, but you're also looking at the possibility of zero seats and a total demolition of your political party, which I didn't want to see. And, um, and I wanted to make sure that, uh, that w there is someone in the legislature to hold the flag up for the NDP. And, um, and you know, it wasn't an easy decision. I'm sure it wasn't an easy, easy decision for Kathleen Wynne. Her situation is slightly different. There are three political parties in contention. Any one of them could have formed government at the end of the election. Uh, but she, I understand that she faced a similar situation where some polls indicated that they could have less than eight seats, two or three seats in the legislature, which would uh, uh, mean the loss of uh, official status, party status in the legislature. And obviously uh, she made a very difficult decision uh, uh, for herself. Yeah, I wanted to ask you what you were sort of thinking when you, when you saw that announcement uh, made on Saturday. Well, I, I was in Ontario um, uh, the last week of May, um, May 21st to May 24th, 5th, and I saw how the numbers were um, in one of the committee rooms, and uh, things weren't going well. And obviously, she had, um, and I heard her say that uh, she thought she did well in the debate, and the numbers should have moved up. Um, didn't move up and uh, therefore I think she saw the writing on the wall and didn't want the party totally decimated and uh, and I think she's making a, a reasonable argument obviously anybody that wants to have a majority government would dismiss that argument out of hand but she is making an argument that if you don't like either the NDP or uh, the PCs one of them is going to be government um, 
elect some liberals and they can hold their feet to the fire. Is it risky though to 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 try and encourage that this way? Is it is it possible that it could backfire that instead of people saying, Oh, oh now I better support my local candidate instead they'll say, Ah, oh, what's the point? Well, I think that if if the loyal liberals who had been loyal to the party ten, fifteen, twenty percent, um, if they realize that if they bolted now from the party, party would be decimated totally, uh, and that one of the one of the others would be a government anyway, and and there could be a minority government or a majority government, I think that her decision would likely solidify the liberal support rather than um, it kind of fleeing to other parties. Interesting. Uh, what advice do you have for the party uh, after, I mean, your party, if, if in fact this election does turn out the way those numbers, uh, those numbers say and, and they might not even have official party status, what was the, the, your party sort of rebuilding process like and, and what did you learn from that, that that might make its way into advice for, for the Liberals? Well, you go back to ground zero actually, you um, start rebuilding, it's going to take a long time. It's a long haul. It takes several um, several years, uh, and uh, you know, first thing they'll have to do is uh, get into a leadership campaign and elect a new leader, and that uh, hopefully would mean uh, a renewal for them. Uh, and uh, you know, they'd be in contention again. I hope you don't mind, but I wanted to switch topics before I let you go. And we had you on last time talking about the pipeline. And since then, the federal government did announce that it is going to outright buy it. The Prime Minister is in B.C. tomorrow, and I'm wondering what you think, uh, how, how his message will be received there after this decision. Well, I think that the lines have been drawn clearly. Uh, obviously, I understand the polls are saying that nationally, uh, more than half the people now oppose uh, the decision to purchase. Um, I think the Prime Minister would have been better placed if he had acted sooner um, and actually had taken over the pipeline legally rather than financially. Um, but be that as it may, I think he took the decision to ensure uh, that, uh, that he is not perceived to be using a hammer because the legal approach, uh, passing legislation and simply taking over legally would have been seen as a, a very big hammer and people perhaps would have been angrier. I think that he's going to face, um, he'll face demonstrations and he'll face criticism. And he, knew, I'm sure he knew that going in, he had to make a decision. He had no option not to purchase it if he hadn't brought the legislation in to take over. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be a difficult summer in British Columbia and, uh, I just ran into one of the activists in the uh, lobby here, and, uh, and I understand that uh, tempers are running high. Uh, but Mr. Chiru, I'm sure, uh, knows that uh, that was going to be the case. She, um, uh, uh, he, Elizabeth May said, I think last week at one point, that the Liberals will lose every seat in BC, uh, that, that, that there won't be one left standing. Do you think that that's accurate, or, or does it go too far, based on your experience well, there? Well, you know, in our worst days, um, we had, two federal Liberals had two seats here, and uh, in our best days before Mr. Trudeau, we had ten. Uh, my sense is that, um, that uh, you know, I mean, election is, is more than a year from now. Um, people have short memories and, uh, you know, they, they'll be able to pick up five to ten seats. Uh, uh, they, they won't have the 18 they have now. Interesting. Okay, thanks a lot for your insight, Mr. Desange. Thank you.